This video was produced by Virginia View, a consortium dedicated to promoting remote sensing outreach, education, and research through funding by the America View Consortium. This video was developed in partnership with the Virginia Geospatial Extension Program and GeoTED UAS. Its contents are solely the responsibility of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official views of America View, the USGS, or other partners. The mention of trade names or commercial products does not constitute their endorsement. In comparison to the software-controlled unsupervised classification process, an analyst has more control over the supervised classification process. This is the first of three chapters on the supervised classification process that should be completed in sequence. In this chapter, we cover training samples. In chapters 23 and 24, we cover evaluating training data, generating supervised signatures using training samples, and finally performing a supervised classification on a Landsat 8 image. This chapter uses the 11-band composite Landsat 8 image subset to the extent of the map viewer that was created in Chapter 15. We'll be using the same informational classes that we used in the chapter on unsupervised classification, Chapter 21. The first step associated with supervised classification is creating training samples, a sample of spectral values characterizing each informational class. Let's use the Training Samples Manager to create our training samples. Go to the Imagery tab, Classification Tools, Training Samples Manager. An informational classification scheme is already built into the Training Samples Manager, NLCD 2011. But you don't have to use this one. You can either create a new one, or if you already have an informational class schema, you can navigate to the folder and load that one. We're going to start with this one and modify it to match our informational classes. Right-click on the name of any of the informational classes listed under NLCD 2011. Here, classes can be added, removed, or edited. Since we only have four informational classes, we need to remove the others. Let's remove all but water, developed, forest, and planted cultivated. If you removed an informational class by mistake, you can select the plus button to add a new class. Once only four classes remain, right-click and edit the properties of each of the classes, renaming and changing the symbol color if necessary to correspond with our informational classes. Now let's save. Since we edited an existing schema, we'll use the Save As button so we don't overwrite the NLCD 2011 schema. Name your new schema, and in Output Location, select the folder to save it to. Remember where you saved it. We'll need it later. Now that the classification schema has been created, let's create training samples based on this schema. We create training samples using the drawing tools. You have options for drawing polygons, circle, or freehand. Use whichever of these best capture the pixels you're interested in. Let's start with water. Zoom way into Smith Mountain Lake in the southeast portion of the image. Select the water class and then click on circle. Once an appropriate location is found in the lake, drag to create the circle. Be sure to stay away from shorelines. We don't want to capture any of those spectral values for water. And don't worry, sometimes it takes a few tries to get the hang of selecting samples. And if you don't like the sample of pixels that you just captured, just select the sample listed in the bottom part of the window, right click, and delete. Now zoom in and out and navigate around the scene to pick up additional water pixels for this lake. Here, I'll use the freehand tool to draw around the irregular boundaries of a different part of the lake. This tool and the polygon tool is most effective for non-symmetrical areas. Note that we also captured some of the water that is a bit turbulent. Remember, the point is to get samples of many different spectral values related to a specific feature. As training samples are added in the map viewer, 
Each is separately listed in the training sample manager at the bottom. Collect water samples from multiple locations in the image, rivers or lakes and other locations of the image, for example. The training sample is a separate file from the classification schema. Name the training sample file a shapefile so that you understand its purpose. We'll need this later. Once finished with water, move on to training urban, forest, and agriculture. You need not train them in order. Zoom in to Roanoke. For an urban training sample, we're not concerned with individual features within an urban area. All streets, parks, golf courses, and anything within the urban area will be classified as urban. When complete, the image in the map viewer will display all of the training samples. When have you collected enough training samples? It depends on the area, the variation in spectral signatures of land cover, and the project you're working on. Be sure you collect samples across the entire geographic spread of the image, sampling different types of agriculture, forest, urban, and water areas. This completes creating a training sample. In the next chapter, we evaluate the spectral coverage of the training samples to determine if we have collected a sufficient number of samples, a necessary step before conducting the supervised classification in Chapter 24.